The US two-year versus 10-year part of the yield curve continues to re-steepen. And the difference between the yield on the 10-year note and the yield on the two-year note now stands at over 100 basis points. If we look at the historical yield curve, this all looks very normal. We can see that in advance of the COVID recession, the yield curve inverted, albeit briefly, and then started to re-steepen just like it had on the previous three occasions. However, this obscures a very different dynamic that's been in play over the last 18 months compared to before. And this is contributing to the confusion about the outlook for the US economy. On the previous occasions, the yield curve flattened because the two-year yield was rising up to the level of the 10-year yield. And that's called a bear flattening because the two-year note is selling off as a result of the US Federal Reserve tightening interest rates, which helps increase the yield at the front end of the curve. Invariably, the Fed would over-tighten to such an extent that the economy comes under pressure and the Fed is once again forced to cut rates in order to stimulate growth. The flattening of the curve during the recent cycle was indeed initiated by a typical Fed tightening cycle that drove up yields at that front end of the curve. The final hike by the Fed, however, was one hike too many, and this led to a 20% collapse in the S&P at the end of 2018. By the middle of 2019, the Fed went into reverse. The yield curve, however, continued to flatten in mid-2019 because yields at the long end fell at a faster pace than yields at the front end so that eventually they converged and led to a brief inversion. Now, people will often say that the yield curve predicts a recession, but this inversion in no way predicted the onset of COVID. The curve had inverted because of demand from global systematically important banks switching loans into bonds on their balance sheets in order to reduce their regulatory burden. If the yield curve had predicted the recession, it did so unknowingly. If we go back to the historical two-year, 10-year curve and recession, here we can see the re-steepening that takes place before the onset of recession. The re-steepening usually results from the Fed trying to undo their handiwork and cut interest rates. This drags down yields at the front end, causing a bull steepening of the curve because the two-year note is now rallying. However, during the current re-steepening, it's the reverse that's been in play. It's been a rise in the yield of the 10-year, called a bear steepening, that has led to the steepening of the curve. In fact, what we can see with this chart is that the two-year yield has been retesting the lows, in this case, the all-time lows, whilst the 10-year yield has been rising. They're telling two very different stories. The front end is reflecting skepticism about growth, or at least the Fed's willingness to react to growth. Although if there was any real underlying growth, the bond market would be pushing yields higher. Instead, the front end is acting as if growth is about to take another hit lower. That's hardly the expected outcome if there was true reflation in the air. The long end, on the other hand, has been pricing for inflation from both the effect of higher commodity prices due to the weaker US dollar and from the expected fiscal and monetary boost that's constantly been promised by policymakers. But if we get inflation before growth, then growth is unlikely to take place. High commodity prices will boost the coffers of some commodity-rich countries, but the commodity users will see their higher input prices impact margins and contract them. In its simplest form, that's stagflation. The point here is that the reflation narrative continues to be mixed up with the inflation narrative. The two can take place at the same time, but when commodity prices are rising because the dollar is falling, rather than because there is a massive demand from, for instance, China, then the impact of higher prices will quickly damage the prospects for real growth. Therefore, it would be no surprise if investors armed with cash handouts continue to target the equity market rather than the real economy. Until policymakers start aiming their fiscal stimulus at the real economy, the equity market will divert capital to those non-performing assets, making it increasingly difficult for policymakers to stimulate true economic growth. Thanks for watching this week's episode, and we'll see you next week for more insights on the market.